Now then, uh, welcome back. Um, coming up is episode 4.2, the final instalment um, featuring Jonathan Sherwood and his mid-school collection. We're going to talk a little bit more about a couple more bikes that were pulled out and filmed, and a little bit more about some frames that he has hanging up, and, and that's going to wrap it up. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little series of Now That's Mid School. Um, if you have, again, don't forget, um, like, subscribe, share, comment, um, get involved, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for sticking with us. See you next time. Um, and then, yeah, good old Wilkinson Airlines. This is one of the first bikes I actually built. Um, I remember on the, on the Rad forum, I'd been looking for one for a while, and a guy had one for sale, and there were a few people chasing him for it. He said, look, it would be rude of me to choose one of you as a buyer. I'll just bosh it on eBay, and you guys can bid it out. <laughs> so I was like, game on, like, let's do this. And um, I ended up being like the only bidder on it. Like I got it for less than I than, than it was advertised for on the rat for it. So winning. It was a, winning. Yeah, it was a surreal. Um, same happened with that menstrual cycle, by the way. It was on eBay, and I know Nick and a few other people mentioned it on Facebook too. Like, hey, this is on eBay, and there were rumors that some like unknown, I don't know, BMX gangster was going to drop huge money on it, and everyone needs to back off. And I, I honestly, I bid like reasonable money on it, and I won. So, uh, <laughs> people seem to, they seem to fade a bit when it comes to eBay. But yeah, yeah. this, this um. I got this for really good money. This thing I've had for more than 10 years now. So, you know, way before things got crazy with these bikes. And as crap as they were, they're fetching big money again now, aren't they? Oh, totally. And, uh, you know, um, grabbed the same Quentin bars off the museum for a steal. I think they were like $50 or something. Um, it never came with a bash guard. But the guy I got it from said, the original owner was someone in, uh, based in Leeds or Bradford somewhere and he said here's the guy's mobile number give him a call I bet he's still got the bash guard somewhere and I called the guy and he, th he did have the bash guard <coughs> oh. so I got the bash guard for it and then um, in 2017-2018 I was living and working in the US and Ron Wilkerson actually has a has a cafe in Santa That's Cruz right. yeah. and um, I went in there and bumped into him one day and told him I had this bike or whatever. And he's like, oh, I've still got some stuff. So he gave me a bunch of decals and he gave me a spare bash guard for it. Nice. So um, I sold the original bash guard. In hindsight, I would I should have, would have rather Long kept time. it. But I sold the original bash guard and put the one that Ron gave me onto the bike. Um, but yeah, it's just a cool piece of rider own BMX history. You know? Next one, Haofeng Daddy. That's a that's an early one inch Haofeng Daddy. A bit of an odd one. I bought it off a guy local here actually in the northeast, but it was originally a bike from sort of the New Jersey area uh, in the US. He had he bought it off the museum. It was originally black, um, spray bond and whatnot. The interesting thing about this is it's got canty mounts on it, which was which isn't unusual for a half on daddy yeah but the brake bridge on tnt's is normally like a really nice like tubular bridge yes that's got like a, a like a really odd plate like, flat plate bridge on it um and when i had it painted from black to yellow i don't like sand sandblasting bikes I so i had it dipped and that bridge is not added like it's it's all oh, right yeah original article yeah. so it's um it's a funny one i don't i don't know why it's got a different bridge and i've not seen another one with a bridge like that but otherwise who were making tnt back then i think tnt just do their own stuff i don't think they made their own bikes i don't think they made their own bikes but i don't know but um, i don't think they did but other than that, it's like a really, really clean, really solid, no damage, no nothing. Straight as an yeah, arrow it, bike. It, it looked, you know, nozzle. Mm. All intents and purposes. Yeah, and it's got TNT bars on it, TNT stand. Yeah. 
Um, Rocket. Yeah, it's it's tenty it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, other than tenty cranks, which it doesn't have, but yeah, super nice bike. Uh, rides really good. Um, and that that distinctive uh, seat tube. Yes. Like nobody else has done that. No, once again, like you know, and they carried that on with the 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 uh, later mid school one that yes. was the oversized XXL or something. They did a C four had it, I think, as well. Right. But you know, kind of kooky. But once again, you know, the whole bike's kind of kind of weird, and um, I just remember really being surprised to see that bike and then just you know. I wouldn't say it ever lasted for one back in the day, but it was just the half on daddy was. You didn't, like, you didn't just flick past it in the magazine, did you? Yeah, yeah. It for a minute, like. And you know, like it's hard not to think of sort of the mid nineties BMX and not think of the half on daddy. Yeah. yeah. Reynolds, that's a pretty interesting one. So. I was I've always a bit of a soft spot for uh, the Reynolds racing. Yeah, uh, it was uh, stuff. Yeah, so I guess for me, what was interesting is once again, rider owned brand. Yeah, and and Craig was super fast, um, and his bikes were known for being like long, right? So that was the forty, which was for the time long, but then he did the the McManus one, the, the forty two as well. Really, really long bikes, long top chips, long chain stays, um, and just I guess they were kind of unique for that, known for that. And he did try some interesting stuff later on with like a square chain, not square, like more rectangular box section chain stays yeah. and stuff, and always did it his own way, which I which I respected. But those early Reynolds, like this one, which is a first gen fresh forty, when he was. Um, you know, I always I always put like Reynolds and Play and Two V Home Cooked like in the same in the same bucket, yeah. you know, and like it's the from the from that sort of region in the states, aren't they all yeah, together? Yes, yeah. yeah. and you know, um, I remember like reading the BMX Plus mags where they first rocked up to race and they were wearing like just white long sleeve T shirts with like. Uh, their their team screen printed on it like it was proper grassroots. Yeah, really cool. And of course, they went on to be a hugely successful team. And you know, Reynolds ended up having like really flashy race kits and stuff. But just those early days where it was like white long sleeve tees and it rip. just seemed to me to give off that that really slick operation vibe. Yeah, and like once again, it was like very much like race or run, you know. Like yeah. the guys running it were the guys racing, and like it was, I loved that. Yeah, so yeah. that bike I actually bought in the UK from Darren Wood. Um, drop hats had been cut to 14, had been spray bombed grey, looked like it had been used mostly for riding trails or something. Um, isn't it mad how like frames like that still having the, the dropouts, you know, hacked yeah. out? Yeah, like, yeah. They must have been ridden hard, you know, like, but it's straight as an arrow. Like, um, I think Patrick did the dropouts, repaired the dropouts for me on that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the first gen bicycle motocross. Um, that's a really iconic bike, of course, for, for BMX and for standard. And um, frame came from, uh, sorry, the frame came from Germany, the fork came from the UK, and the stem came from the US. But I finally managed to get the matching kit. Um, Kavachi wheels, uh, standard bars. Um, that bike is awesome. I really, really like that bike. And yeah. We'll definitely be getting that one. Yeah, bizarrely slack head angle on those things, like very slack head angle. Um, kind of works. Yes, it does, doesn't it? For sure. I mean, if you're going fast, it's, it's it, it helps. But yeah, original paint, original decals. Um, that's you know whether it means anything or not. That's a pretty pretty rare bike. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Um, what else? Let me kind of get into a, a chunk of S and M's there. 
Uh, yeah, it's like S&M corner. A 1990 Holmes, a 93 Challenger, a 92 dirt bike, 89 Mad Dog, 99 Challenger, 92 Morris Day Holmes, and I think, I think a 91 Widowmaker. Right. Or 92 Widowmaker. It's a non gusset one, which means it's earlier, but. Yeah. Whether it was 91 or 92, I, I, I couldn't say. So, yeah. So, have you got a favourite? Obviously, the motocross is, is up there. Do you know what? Like, I often think about it. Like, the fact that I struggle to sell any of them kind of <laughs> tells you that they're all, they're all favourites. Yeah. Um, the ones that are probably really close to me personally are probably not the ones that people would find desirable like obviously the Bennett and the 93 homes are very close to what I read back in the day and if it ever came to sort of clearing out the herd those those are probably the two I'd keep yeah. even if they're not they're probably the least valuable of the lot um they have the most meaning yeah for sure um but man they've all got little threads that make them mean something to me you know like it's hard it's, it's hard to pick a pick a favorite and um if i was just collecting them because of value or rarity it would be easy but because they've all got little connections to people i know or places i've been or whatever you know it's hard that they, they, they all mean a lot Yeah. And then the frames on the front wall, we've already touched on the uh, the back cords there. Yeah, so then, then there's a 93 dirt, dirt bike. bike yeah. it, I've only got it because it's an amazingly good condition one. It's been spray bombed, um, green, but... It's been nicely done though, hasn't it? If that was really... Uh, my plan was to, because it was a really good spray bombed, I was going to get it done the blue, that, that kind of dark blue that yeah. it did and redo it, but it's, it's immaculate, it's a beautiful one and a good candidate for being done. That there is a second gen FBM deployer that my friend gifted to me. And he, Fraser, I don't know if you remember the STF video, Stoke the Fire videos, Fraser Byrne, that was oh, his bike. Fraser Byrne, yeah. He gave it to me and he's always paranoid that I've sold it and have <laughs> from this gift. So I just have to call out the bike is still there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll focus in on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and the first gen metal kids. Yeah, yeah. I um, remember you getting that whilst I was yeah. re refurbishing mine. Yeah, yeah. So I've had that's my second one. The first one I sold, um, and then deeply regretted it. And was it the first one that was missing the brake lugs, and you had? Yes, and I put the brake lugs back on it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that one I sold, and then regretted it instantly. So I've got, I've managed to get that one. Um, Beautiful condition, unrestored. Yeah. Dropouts look like a the hub's never been in them, but bizarrely it's been repowdered a hideous grey. Yeah. So, um, when I get time, that will be going off to be turned back into burgundy. Yeah. And I've got some of the decals they did when they did the reissue that I'll yeah. put on it. Yeah. But that that bike. But oh, that bugs me. That. What? That bugs me. The decals that they did for the girlfriend. Oh, what's wrong with them? Because they come on a sheet, yeah. not individually, pre-cut. Um, are they not cut out? No. Well, they are cut out, uh, uh. but you've then got to cut them off the sheet. Ah, uh, okay, I'm with, um, you. I'm with you, I'm with you. And, and I can't remember which end it is now without without looking, but one of them, you've got to cut a corner off. Oh, really? Not, you get the graphic, the full graphic, but the actual backing uh. that it's on, you've got, and it's like, like, should we just oh, really? square? Oh, that is irritating. That is irritating. But yeah, I'll, I'll get that one put back. And that thing honestly looks like it was never ridden. I, I, I was pretty lucky to find that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it'll go back to Burgundy and I'll put the sticks on. Then there's a first gen FBM Bitch and Camaro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sadly, suffered the fate of opened up dropouts. Oh. And um, look how thin those dropouts are as well. And it's that it's it had a built-in C clamp that's been ground off it. But I'm not a huge FBM guy, I'll be honest. I used to distribute FBM, so I have an affinity to the brand, but 
the, like the fire being a him thing. I was uh, I was a little bit more about good times than debauchery or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, mayhem. Yeah. So, but that bike for me is awesome. And once again, like knowing what FBM is, the fact they made a race frame is crazy, right? So. Yeah. That bike I would like to restore um, back to original condition. It's a nice one with a very long top tube. Um, drop pass desperately need to be repaired and get that that brake uh, sorry seat clamp put back on it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll put that one back to gloss black. Um, I need to find some Bitch and Camaro decals for it, but that that will be going back to back to standard. And then the other two. Um, I used to distribute fly bikes. Yeah. And one of my team riders, Buddy Challen, was given an opportunity to have a signature colorway. And that was the signature colorway. So he signed that and gave it to me as a gift. And then that is a Gen 2 Garrett that I used to ride. And when I got my Gen 3, it's been up on the wall. Yeah. Ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there we have it. I don't know about you a lot, but I'm jealous. A huge thanks to Jonathan for inviting me to his home and the hospitality he extended to me. Thanks, Jonathan. Mid-school John on the BMX Museum or at Merlin on the Instagram. If you're of the mind to have your mid-school collection featured here on Now That's Mid-School, leave a comment here in the comments section via DM on Instagram at, at Now That's Mid-School or via email at now that's midschool at gmail.com and we'll see if we can work something out and remember it doesn't have to be just bikes or the USA made brands bikes, parts, soft goods, media anything goes so long as it's midschool show me